let's talk about working with and manipulating tree values. We've seen how we can construct a tree using a nested expression, but we could also construct a tree using a recursive function. So let's build a function that constructs a fib tree for the nth Fibonacci number. That's going to have the nth Fibonacci number at the root, and then the branches are going to describe how it was computed. Each parent will have the sum of its children as its value. So if n is less than or equal to 1, that means it's 0 or 1, then we can return a leaf containing 0 or 1, respectively. Otherwise, we want to build a tree that has a left branch and a right branch, which we get by making recursive calls to fib tree on n minus 2 and n minus 1. Finally, we return a tree where the root value is a Fibonacci number and the branches are left and right. Now to get that Fibonacci number, I'm going to add together the root of the left tree and the root of the right tree. So fib tree 1 is 1 and fib tree 0 is 0, those are the leaves. Fib tree 2 has structure to it. And if I compute fib tree 4, I get the tree that I've been looking at in all of the diagrams you've seen. So that has the number 3 at the root, that's the fourth Fibonacci number, and also fib tree of 2 as its left branch and fib tree of 3 as its right branch. We can create trees using recursion, and we can also analyze trees using recursion. So here's a function to count the leaves of a tree t. Processing a leaf is often the base case of a tree processing function. In this case, if t is a leaf, the number of leaves in the tree is 1. The recursive case typically makes a recursive call on each branch, and then does some sort of aggregation. So here, we can get the branch counts by calling count leaves on each branch b in the branches of t, and then I can return the sum of the branch counts. Or I could have written this all in one expression. So let's quickly write count leaves if is leaf t return 1 else return the sum of the result of counting the leaves of each branch for b in branches of t. So for fib tree 4, which we were looking at earlier, we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 leaves, and so count leaves should give us 5, and it does. Note that fib trees for any larger number, like 10, are quite involved because they have the fib trees 8 and 9 as branches. And so the 10th Fibonacci number is 55, and how many leaves does this have? Well, quite a few indeed, 89. An interesting fact is that this number of leaves 89 is actually the 11th Fibonacci number. Here's a discussion question. Implement leaves, which returns a list of the leaf values of a tree. So leaves is going to take fib tree of 5, let's say, and give me all of the leaves, which are going to be 1s and zeros. These are the leaf values. Remember that if you apply sum on a list of lists and you start with a list value, then you can aggregate all of those values together. So for example, if I say sum of the lists 1, the list 2, 3, and the list 4 using this starter value, then I'll get the list 1, 2, 3, 4. If I sum with just that one value, I'll get that one value back. But be careful, if you have a list within a list within a list and you apply sum, you still get a list within a list. So it removes one level of nesting, but not all levels of nesting. Now I think you're ready to define leaves. Here is the uh, base case. If it's a leaf, then get the root of the tree, which is the leaf value, and return that in a list. That's the list of all the leaves values in the tree that's a leaf. Otherwise, I have branches. So what do I sum? It's one of these eight expressions. Take a look for a second. Feel free to pause. I'm going to show you in 3, 2, 1. What we want is to sum the list of leaves for each branch. That will give me a list of all the leaf values. And that means I need to make a recursive call of leaves. 
on each branch b for the branches in the tree. So it has almost exactly the same structure as count leaves. It's just that the base case is different. Instead of returning the integer 1, that I have one leaf, I return the leaf value itself in a list, and summing just puts those values into longer and longer lists. Oftentimes we have one tree and we want to create another tree. So a function that creates a tree from another tree is also typically recursive. Here's an example. Let's say I want to increment the leaves of t, which returns a tree just like t, but each leaf value is one more than the input. Well, if it's a leaf, then I just get the leaf value, add one to it, and return a leaf. Otherwise, I increment the leaves for each branch and build myself a tree. The root value of that tree, which is not a leaf, will be the same. But all of the branches will be different because they will have incremented leaves. Here's another example. What if I want to increment every value in the tree? So this is to return a tree like t, but with all node values incremented. I can write this in one line. It says, build me a tree, where I take the root value and add one to it. And then I take each branch and I increment all the values there. This does have a base case because sometimes branches is empty, so it won't make any recursive calls. Those are at the leaves. So implicitly, it has the same structure as this. But we can write it in one line, just letting Python worry about when branches is empty and when it's not.